back in Cambridge, back stuck in traffic as per usual, listening to this excellent Brigitta, Brigitta, Flick Quartet, Brigitta, Brigitta was one of the um, people who was at this conference with us, um, another saxophone player, excellent, really enjoying the album. So I'm trying to race to the supermarket very quickly before I have to head back and start teaching and I managed to squeeze in an appointment at the doctor's to try and see about my chest, my cough and also um, I've run out of my inhaler while I was in Germany because I was puffing away on it. Q&A will also be on later on today. I also have to go and test fly the drone because after I crashed it in France it didn't work in Belgium and it, I didn't get a chance to use it in Germany anyway. So I want to check I've not done some permanent damage when it hit the car. Oh, but I didn't. I can't afford to be like Casey Neistat with a drone graveyard. Oh, no. Good, is it? It's the first chance I've had since I got home. No. Well, it works, which is a real relief because I was a bit worried. I need to order some spare props and I also need to sort out. I've lost this mic, you can probably hear it clicking then. One of the little tiny little rubber holders has gone missing, so hopefully, Rogue sell replacements of those. A bit scary when that heli army helicopter went past though, and uh, it got down quick. Anyway, crack on teaching and then I'm going to do your QA. It's so nice to be back home in the studio. It's amazing what good lighting does to my complexion and the quality of these videos. Sorry. Uh, Q and A time. Few questions in this week, so let's hit at them straight away. Urban Sax says, awesome video. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I do try. Um, talking about setups, uh, any suggestions on Altissimo registers? He really wants to expand his range. Altissimo register. <laughs> Very nice, very nice. I once ruptured myself doing that. Uh, my best advice on Altissimo is to make sure you can nail the overtone exercises, of which there are a few lessons on Cambridge saxophone and by the Rasha T True Tones book. Um, there is another one for the Altissimo by a guy called Lyons, if I remember correctly. I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a blue book. I can even picture it, but I can't tell you the name. And if I go looking for it, it will be the I'll be midnight before I get this finished. But it's a lot of overtone exercises to be able to gain the control to manipulate the airstream to, be able to hit those notes. Eric Alexander talks about using like minor elevens. Let me play it for you. <laughs> I'm not warmed up and it's late, so I don't want to do too much on this. But tone matching, so kind of play B flat. <laughs> and then use low B-flat fingering to match that pitch. For the minor 11th exercises, you say like C minor 11, and then uh, D-flat. I've no F sharp key on this sax, so I have to false finger that. Uh, where was it? D. All right. So you have, I didn't do that one very well. There you go. So you have 
a pitch to aim for. So start on minor 11th chords that you can do. Minor 11th chords are a minor triad followed by a major triad a step low. So if you're doing C minor triad, so C minor 11, it's a C minor triad, C, E flat, G, followed by a B flat major triad, B flat, D, F, the 11th being the final note of that. But that altissimo register is not that easy to do to get right. It takes a lot of practice. You have to support the airstream. You can cheat a little bit, but it never works because then you end up failing to get full altissimo register. So definitely work on that. And then practicing scales up there is really important. Um, you use it correctly. I mean, there are plenty of guys who use it as a gimmick. I try not to be one of them who uses it gimmickly. I try and use it as an extension of the horn. Bruce says, those saxophone lessons really help. Thank you for the free lessons. Bruce, you are very welcome. Anyone else who wants to get hold of four free saxophone lessons from me, head to cambridgesaxophone.com, wait for the little pop-up to come in, put your email in, four free lessons will be on their way to you straight away. Uh, Sono wanted to know, Miles, UK uses Miles, not Miles Davis, of course, here. Yes, we do use Miles. We are not fully European. In fact, we probably won't be European much longer. Question from Dominic. Hi Dan, I've been watching your YouTube for a little while. I wanted to ask you if you think it's a good choice to go into a professional scene of a saxophonist and instrumental in general. I'll be going to an American university later this year, studying music education. I was wondering if I could still play on top of that. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. Nice one, Dominic. Great question. Probably could do like a whole course, never mind a few vlogs on this. But to answer your specific question, I would say, where's your passion? And I would guess if you're going to study music education, you have a passion for teaching. And that's really important because you need to be passionate about what you're doing. If you're passionate about performing and you're willing to make those sacrifices to become a performer, then you should do all you can to be a full-time performer. It's not for everyone and there are very few people who can actually earn a living from it. And I mean that to all of you. I guess if you know if you're heading off to university you're 18 19 and without I don't want to mean to sound patronizing but you your mind will change your life will change your circumstances will change just work the hardest at what you're doing find where your passion is and it will work out from there and you will still get the chance to play if you're still willing to practice and you know you'll need to do half an hour an hour a day if that's all you can do it's better to keep it up keep playing with other people and just see what develops. You know, at 18, 19, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I kind of knew I wanted to play music, but I wasn't sure how that worked out. And I'm glad in one sense that I wasn't too concrete in what it was gonna be because things like YouTube and what I do with Cambridge Saxophone and social media and all these kind of things never even existed. So it's better to be, have as many strings to your bow as you possibly can and see where those things take you. I hope that answers your question, Dominic. Maybe I'll do a, a, a bigger vlog on that question at some point, because it is a question that people do ask. Um, Super Metro says this video is kind of old. Well, it's not that old. I mean, you know, okay, it's not today's vlog. Uh, but you said, why do you have bass clarinet reads for your tenor? You talked about using B-flat clarinet reads on Soprano. No, I don't use bass clarinet reads for tenor. I, well, I use bass clarinet reads when I'm playing bass clarinet but I have been known once or twice to accidentally use a bass clarinet reed for my tenor, and I tell you, it's hard work. It's not really advisable. Um, so that's why I have those in there. Finally, Blue Lead asks a question, and I was kind of umming and ahhing with that answer this question. Sorry, I'm still, my doctor's put me on a different set of antibiotics. I'm still struggling with this chest. It says, do you prefer the Yanaga Sawa tenors or the Mark VI you own? I'm assuming the Mark VI. It depends what I'm playing. The Mark VI tenor gives me the sound I hear in my head and how I want to play. The Yanagasawa tenors are wonderful, wonderful saxophones. I heartily endorse their saxophones. They're phenomenal instruments. I play the soprano and I play their alto. I've said to Yanagasawa, honestly, make me a Yanagasawa tenor that outplays my Mark VI and I will play that on more or less everything else. If it gives me what I'm after is the sound I hear in, internally in my head. If I have any kind of saxophone that can help me find that sound, and at the moment it's this Mark VI, I will move heaven and earth in order to get that because what I'm after is that particular sound that I hear. If a saxophone's not enabling me to have that sound, 
I feel like it's in the way. The best way I can describe it is when my Mark VI took a tumble, which you can watch about in this vlog, I borrowed two of my students' saxophones. I borrowed the one uh, that was mentioned about the 1975 Mark VI, which was my teacher's old horn, and I borrowed a 1958 Mark VI, which is one of my students. It's in beautiful condition. I helped them choose. My t uh, the 75 Mark VI is a phenomenal instrument. I enjoy playing it. It took me to places, but the 58 Mark VI, because it was very similar to my saxophone, it didn't feel like I was playing a saxophone. What I mean by that was, I was able to get my musical ideas across with the sound I hear in my head with ease, and it felt like I was playing my own saxophone. And that's what I'm looking for. I might want to go back to a balanced action at some point. I might want to play more alto. This moment in time, this Mark VI with this setup is giving me the sound I want to have in order to set over the musical ideas I have. That might change. I know that's a long-winded answer, but that's the truth. It's For me, it's never that clear cut. I want an instrument that's going to give me the best chance to make the best music. Anyway, that ties up today's Q&A. Thank you very much for watching. If you don't already subscribe, please do so by hitting me and the little saxophone below. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out these videos.